welcome back. Today I have another skincare video for you. Skincare is one of my favorite topics as I'm sure most of you already know, but today we will be discussing 10 common skincare mistakes that you are probably making. Now this video is not meant to throw shade at anyone or anything like that. I am definitely very guilty of making a lot of these mistakes in the past. These are just common things, common trends that I have noticed a lot of people doing throughout my time working in skincare and also just many years watching YouTube videos and being on social media. Skincare is an extremely complicated topic. We are not born knowing all of the intricacies and inner workings of our skin, so we are all bound to make mistakes at some point. Before we get into it, I will be linking my past couple skincare videos in the description box down below as well as the cards up here. I did a video called Three Products That Have Transformed My Skin, all about healing my acne scarring, and then I also did a video called Three Steps for Healthy and Radiant Skin, which are just three basic easy but essential steps that you need to be implementing in your skincare routine to keep your skin looking its best. I'm very proud with how both of those videos turned out. They're both extremely informative, so if you haven't watched them already, you definitely don't want to miss out. But with further ado, let's get into our 10 skincare mistakes. Mistake number one is that you are not paying attention to your neck. We spend so much time focusing on our faces that I think we tend to overlook the fact that the skin on our neck is also aging and also needs a little bit of extra TLC. The best thing you can do for this is just to simply start applying your skincare routine on your neck as well as a preventative measure. So take your cleansers, your exfoliators, your masks, your serums, your moisturizers, etc., your sunscreens, and start bringing them down your neck. There are creams on the market that are specifically for your neck and decollete area, but the best thing you can do is just to start by extending your skincare regimen down a little bit further to help prevent signs of aging on your neck. Mistake number two is that you are trying out too many new products at once. I think this is especially common now that so many people on social media are talking about skincare, it's really easy to get sucked in. Say there's three people you watch on YouTube and they're all raving about a different skincare product. It's really tempting to go out and buy or sample all three of those products and just start trying them all at once because you're so excited. If you're introducing multiple new products at once, if you end up having a breakout or a reaction, it's going to be very difficult to pinpoint which new product is actually the culprit. And I find in most cases, most people will just end up ditching all of the new products together at once because obviously you're not typically going to want to continue using a product if there's a suspicion that it might be causing you to break out or have like an allergic reaction. Even if you want to completely overhaul your entire skincare routine, I would recommend starting with one new product at a time and testing it out for at least a week minimum just so you can really see how your skin reacts to it, but the longer the better. This is something I've been extremely guilty of in the past, especially when I worked for Sephora because I was taking home samples on a daily basis and trying out new products constantly and my skin was hating me for it. It's bad news. Learn from my mistakes, you guys. Don't do this. The third mistake has to do with your eye area. Actually, a few of the mistakes in this video are eye area related, but for the third mistake, we are going to start off with using products in your eye area that aren't specifically formulated for your eye skin. Now, the skin around your eyes is extremely different from the rest of the skin on your face, so extra precautions need to be taken as a result. You can't just treat it like the rest of your face. The skin around our eyes is much, much thinner than the rest of our face, and we also don't have as many oil glands in our eye area, so hydration can be a little bit tricky, and brands do obviously take that into consideration when formulating eye creams and eye serums, so it's really important that you only are using products that are formulated for your eye area in your eye area. Take a shot every time I say eye or eye area. I see so many people in skincare and makeup videos just taking their face creams or their face primers and just slathering it all over their face, like on their eyelids and everything, and it just, it drives me a little bit crazy. I'm not going to lie. This can actually be really damaging for your eye skin. Most commonly, this can result in melia forming. Melia are those annoying little hard white bumps that form in your eye area that typically take forever to go away. One of my biggest pet peeves though is on social media when I see a picture of someone wearing a face mask and they have applied this face mask right up to their lash line and also on their eyelids. Oh, it just makes me shudder even thinking about it just for so many reasons, especially when it's like a clay mask. I'm like, girl, your eyes are gonna be so dehydrated. Also, when you're removing that, how are you not getting it in your eyes and like irritating your eyes? But anyways, this leads me into my next two common mistakes that you might be making in your skincare routine. Number four is that you are being too rough on your eye area. Your eyes are one of the first parts on your body that show signs of aging. And the amount of people I see 
tugging on their eyelids to apply eyeliner or just applying eye cream super roughly just baffles me because this is going to cause premature aging. Going back to the basics, whenever you are dealing with your eye area, you should be using your ring finger. Your ring finger is your weakest finger and it has the most delicate touch and you should always be using tapping motions instead of swiping or tugging. And mistake number five has to do with where you are applying your eye cream. Now that you know that you should be using specifically formulated eye products and that you also should be gentle, it is important to know that placement counts. And I promise this is my last one about eyes. The very vast majority of eye creams are meant to be applied to your orbital bone, not right up to your lashes or on your eyelid. If you're unfamiliar with your orbital bone, it's just your eye socket. So if you picture a human skull, basically where your eye socket ends, where that bone is, that's where you're meant to be gently tapping on your eye cream. And it's very easy to feel too. You can just kind of feel right here below your eyes and then also on your brow bone. Your eye area is constantly moving as you are blinking and expressing yourself. So naturally the product you apply in that area will end up moving too. So what happens when you apply eye cream too close to your eyes? It basically ends up just seeping directly into your eyes instead of going where it should be, which is this delicate tissue in here where you're actually going to see the effects and benefits benefits of your eye cream. Number six is that you're not moisturizing your skin if you are oily. In recent years, I found this has become far less of an issue just as we've learned more about how our skin works, but there are still definitely a lot of people out there who believe that you do not need to moisturize if you have an oily skin type, but it's actually quite the contrary. This is very outdated skincare advice. Back in the day, you were taught that if you had oily or acne prone skin, that you should be doing everything possible to dry out your skin, dry out those breakouts, dry out those oil glands and stop the oil production. But that's simply not healthy and will end up exacerbating the issue in most cases. A lot of the time, if your skin is oily, it's because it's actually lacking hydration and your sebaceous glands are trying to overcompensate for that by producing more oil. When what your skin actually may need is water, which is why you typically see a lot of water-based gels and creams marketed as being for oily skin. Because these types of products will typically help provide that balance. I have a naturally oily skin type, but I drink a lot of water and I work extremely hard to make sure my skin is hydrated and my oil is very balanced and manageable as a result. Mistake number seven, you are over exfoliating. Exfoliation is necessary for healthy skin. If you are unfamiliar with the benefits of exfoliation and everything, I would recommend checking out my video on three steps for healthy skin because I go a little bit more in depth just with the basics, but exfoliating is great. It feels incredible. And once you get started, it's kind of hard not to go overboard because you just want to start doing it every day. It's like, wow, my skin is so smooth and so soft and it looks so good. But the purpose of exfoliating is to remove that upper layer of dead skin cells. If you are over exfoliating, you actually end up damaging the healthy skin cells that aren't actually ready to be shed yet. This leads to a variety of issues like inflammation. It strips your skins of its natural oils and damages your skin's hydrolipidic film, which is your skin's natural protective barrier. And it can also lead to premature signs of aging once again, because this throws your skin's natural skin cell turnover out of whack instead of gently assisting it like occasional exfoliation with Mistake number eight is that you are not using SPF while you are using other products that contain ingredients such as AHAs or retinol. I have talked a lot about the importance of sun protection here on my channel. You should be wearing SPF every single day regardless, but I wanted to make this tip slash mistake a little bit different just to kind of further elaborate on the importance of SPF in your routine. Now I've seen a huge spike in popularity over the past few years of skincare products that contain AHAs, which are also known as alpha hydroxy acids or retinols. These ingredients increase your skin's photosensitivity. So they basically make your skin more susceptible to UV damage, such as sunburns and skin cancer. Some essential oils also increase your skin's photosensitivity as well. And in extreme cases, Using AHAs or retinols, etc., without sun protection can actually cause really awful irritations and rashes and reactions. Chemical burns, essentially, so this brings up another point of just being aware of the ingredients in the products that you are using. Second to last, number nine, is that you are applying more product than you need. This one's pretty simple and straightforward, but I just constantly see people applying way more moisturizer or serum or eye cream 
etc. than they actually need to be. Now with skincare you definitely get what you pay for. If you're using a product with lower quality ingredients then you might need to load it on a little bit more to really kind of see the effects especially when it comes to hydration and things like that. But for the most part with most moisturizers you just need a little dab on your forehead, on your nose, on your chin and on your cheeks and you are good. With eye products you just need the tiniest tiniest little dab on your ring finger. For example a standard 50 ml face cream lasts me six months if I'm using it twice a day every single day. Obviously that goes up to a year if it's just a day cream or a night cream. And a standard 15 ml eye cream lasts me even longer, usually like about 10 months or so I've found. So you do not need to be slathering on the products. Less is more and the obvious benefit of this is that you will end up saving a lot of money in the long run. And finally, my last common mistake is that you are expecting results from your skincare products far too quickly. This is a huge one, you guys. Now obviously, if you're spending any amount of money on a skincare product, you want to be wowed. You want it to be amazing. You want to see those results. As humans, we love the instant gratification factor. That's why so many people turn to makeup instead of skincare. If you have a breakout on your chin, what's going to be faster? Putting some concealer on it or treating the issue? Obviously, the concealer, but what's going to be more beneficial? Going the skincare route. It's natural to have high expectations because when you're buying a product, you're obviously expecting the best possible outcome. And there are definitely some magic products out there that give you pretty much immediate results or you'll see results overnight. But going back to how your skin functions, that's typically not the case and not really a realistic expectation. I was looking at a brand's Instagram the other day and this brand recently released a skincare product that claims you will see results within four weeks, which is very fair and very realistic. And someone commented on this picture and they said, I've been using this product for four days and my skin hasn't gotten any better. But I was just like, and I think that's so many people's mentality when it comes to skincare from what I've seen working in Sephora and working for other skincare companies. Seeing results from a product is mostly dependent on your skin cell turnover rate. When you are young and your skin is super healthy, this process typically takes about 30 days. But as we age, this process gradually slows down to about an average of 60 days or so. So keep this in mind when you're testing out a product. A fair test for a skincare product is about 30 days to really see results and that increases once again depending on your age. So please just keep that in mind if you are trying out a new product and you've been trying it for a few days and you're just not really seeing any results, Give it a fair shot, especially if it's not having any negative impact on your skin, obviously. That is it. Those are my 10 common skincare mistakes that you might be making that I have definitely made in the past and that I have experienced a lot working with clients in the skincare realm. As always, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and that you are able to take something from it. If you want to chat more about skincare with me, like I said, definitely check out those two videos linked down below and in the cards as well. But give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. It really helps me out. Go follow me every on social media. I'm at Sari Rihanna on Twitter and Instagram. I am no longer using Snapchat. I have made the transition to Instagram stories, but also subscribe if you're new to my channel. Button's right down there. I would really appreciate it. But thank you so much for spending this time with me here today. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye guys.